So this bog cotton, there's two forms of bog cotton. There's the single headed bog cotton, which is what this is, and many headed bog cotton. Uh, the two plants are very similar. They're, they've got white fluffy cotton seeds, as you can see, seed heads here with grassy leaves, and they can be seen from about June of each year. Um, the white cotton flowers with seeds attached are easily dispersed by the wind. You can see here, um, if I just put a little bit away, you can see the brown seeds and the white cotton. The wind will take those away and they'll be dispersed to grow elsewhere. So the many-headed bog cotton, so the other type of bog cotton, basically grows in bog pools and it's really clever because the plant has got air canals in its roots which allow the air to pass from parts of the plant sticking out of the water to the roots which can be buried up to about 60 centimetres into wet peat. Um, so that means the pl that plant is adapted to living in the bog pools by snorkelling. So how clever is that? Whereas this one here, the single-headed bog cotton, grows on drier surfaces and we're, we're in a relatively uh, dry area of bog here and it doesn't have those air canals as the many-headed bog cotton does. Um, but there's lots of these single-headed bog cotton plants. They grow tightly packed together to form a clump or a tussock on the bog surface. Uh, and, and that means that these plants can create a drier environment for themselves. So they're, they're creating their own ad adaptation as such. The problem with that is that the plants have to ensure they don't die from a summer drought on the bog because obviously uh, although a bog is very wet in the summer it can dry out. So these leaves here um, are specially adapted to conserve water. Uh, they're very long and rolled. So very thin and long and rolled uh, and they're rolled into needles as such. Um, during the winter the leaves of the single and many headed bog cotton die back. Uh, so all of the food, what happens is all of the food that the plants have produced in the summer through using the power of the sun during the process of photosynthesis or producing their own food, all that plant food is recycled and stored during uh, the winter in underground bulbs ready for next year's growth. So um, that's a way that these plants can uh, are adapted to grow in very nutrient poor situations such as bogland. Bogs are, are very low in nutrients because of their the wet acidic uh, nature and lacking of oxygen.